fine large human being tend to lose what is given because they don't know how to use it. Moreover, they have mind. Mind either constructs it further or destroys it. You know, our life is really connected with nature. And when we study science, we say chlorophyll, green pigment. And it metabolizes, uses the carbon dioxide and gives the oxygen. We, as human animals and other living beings, we use car oxygen and emit carbon dioxide. So we have a complementary relationship as far as life is concerned. Right? I do also find, when you look at it spiritually, Manushya with Manas, with mind, continues to change the surrounding based on his thoughts, actions, and other things that goes around his life, right? When we observe party going on, you know, the party of romantic people, there is a certain level of vibrations. When we visit the Smashan Bhumi crematorium, there is a certain level of vibratory level. When there's a newborn child in someone's house, there's a jubilant, joyful environment then. Marriage ceremony, similar environment based on the couples and the families that's entertaining this marriage wedding ceremony. Our actions, our thoughts create environment. Either we spoil them or we make it so magnificent and glorious. Now, when it comes to plants and trees, they don't have manas like us. They also have some level of consciousness, but it is not changing. You cannot change it. Of course, you can, as human being, can influence with our manas, the consciousness, the vibratory pattern of the green environment, nature itself. And nature retains such divine charge for a considerably a very long time. But I have seen in my capacity as a guide, heartfulness way, when you transmit the spiritual charge to a human being, either that person will retain it for five minutes and and lose it in the sixth minute. There are individuals who will retain for a very long time and they take it further with their own sadhana, with their own practice. So it depends on individual, but by and large human beings tend to lose what is given because they don't know how to use it. Moreover, they have mind. Mind either constructs it further or destroys it. Plants and animals, I mean plants kingdom doesn't do that. So it's a great relationship. And I also have found, you know, once I was very sick and I was told by one healer from Europe that why don't you sit with a prayer to a tree that would you exchange? Because our relationship with trees, it's one of complementary relationship. What is not good for us, we make use of it. And what is not good for them, we can take it. So there's a vibratory exchange. So uh, the healer told me that why don't you sit uh, after the prayer, asking the tree for some permission to sit. And with the prayer you sit. I said, okay, but make sure the trunk of the tree is smaller than your back. And whatever sickness you have, you offer it. And say, okay, take this away, please. And take what you need from me and give me the strength to survive and heal myself. So I have seen this quite often that the trees and us, we have a good relationship, we have to look after them. Mm -hmm.